The Nintendo Entertainment System is one of the most beloved consoles of all time, but it's far from perfect, especially when it came to loading cartridges. Anyone who has ever booted up a game on the NES is familiar with the iconic blinking light error, or that dreaded solid colored screen. As kids, we all just blew to the cartridge, then tried again. That may have gotten some dirt and debris off the contacts, but it didn't really fix anything, and most of the other solutions just fixed the problem temporarily. But now, there's a more permanent fix. It's called Blinking Light Win, and it's a redesign of the loading mechanism on the NES. But why is this even necessary? Well, when Nintendo designed the NES, they wanted to make sure it didn't look like a video game console, due to the recent video game crash in North America. So, unlike the common top-loading design, they made the NES load games from the side, at a slight angle, similar to a VCR. But that design choice was ultimately a design flaw. The player had to push the game down to ensure proper contact. Over time, that pressure caused the pins inside the pin connector to loosen, which gave the system trouble when loading up games. And that's where Blinking Light Wind comes in. It fixes that problem by replacing both the NES's pin connector and loading tray. Games load horizontally rather than at an angle, which increases the lifespan of the pin connector dramatically. Quan Win, owner and head engineer at ArcadeWorks, introduced the idea in December of 2014. I recently picked one up for $30 at the Game On Expo in Mesa, Arizona, from the ArcadeWorks booth. I've replaced the pin connector on my NES three times in the past 10 years, so I was ready for a permanent fix. Quan is pretty familiar with the pin connector replacement solution. He compares that to putting a band-aid over a gash. It will stop the bleeding temporarily, but what the NES really needs are stitches, and that's where Blinking Light Wind comes in. But Blinking Light Wind does even more than replace the pin connector and loading tray. It also has a built-in lockout chip on the PCB. This intercepts the region lock communication between the game and the system, making your NES a region-free console. Now you can play all those great European games we never got in North America. Included with Blinking Light Win is the PCB with the new pin connector, loading tray, instructions, and a sticker that says keep calm and don't press down, a gentle reminder that your NES experience is about to change. Installation is very easy and only requires a screwdriver. You simply take out the old pin connector and tray, install the new ones, and fasten everything down. If you've replaced the pin connector before in an NES, this will feel very familiar. Once everything is back together, you'll need to power cycle your NES until it knows your system's region. This tells the PCB's lockout chip what region to use. Now when you play games, Blinking Light Win will communicate with the 10 NES lockout chip rather than the game, which bypasses the region lockout security. Once your region is selected, it's set permanently. At this point, the mod is done, and you can start playing. I ran a test with my copy of Wampum. Before the mod and without cleaning anything, Wampum booted up about 20% of the time. Once I installed Blinking Light Win, Wampum booted up 90% of the time. And judging by the success of the Blinking Light Win Kickstarter, I'm not the only one who is excited about getting a permanent fix to the NES's design flaw. It smashed its $15,000 Kickstarter goal by raising more than $44,000, and now it's available for everyone. The only issue I had with Blinking Light Win is its grip on the games. It's pretty tight, but it has to be to ensure a proper connection. It doesn't help that there's basically little to no room to actually pull the game out. Over time, this does get easier. As a workaround, some people have just left a Game Genie inside the system to make pulling games out easier. If Blinking Light Win doesn't sound like the solution for you, there are alternatives, but most of them are temporary. For example, you can bend the pins on the connector back to re-establish a tight grip on the game. You can also just replace the pin connector, as I've done several times. Some people even boil their pin connector in distilled water to clean it. But over time, the pins will loosen, and you may see that dreaded blinking light once again. One other fix is to disable the 10 NES lockout chip in the system by clipping it. While this does eliminate the blinking light error and makes your NES region free, if your game cartridge isn't making a good connection with the 72-pin connector, you're still going to get the solid color screen error. 
For $30, Blinking Light Win is a good way to ensure that your NES works every time. You'll still need to clean your games, but it's nice to know that if there's ever an issue, it's most likely with the game now, and not the system. If you're interested in picking one up for yourself, you can get them at ArcadeWorks' website at www.arcadeworks.net. That's all for this episode of Gaming Historian. Thanks for watching. Funding for Gaming Historian is provided in part by supporters on Patreon. Thank you.